untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at the newest expansion on Arena, Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. All the footage captured in today's gameplay video was part of the preview event organized by Wizards of the Coast, so I'm not playing on my personal account, I wish I had this many gems, but uh, we get access to all the cards on this account, and that lets me preview this pretty cool Asper Colored Dungeon Crawlers deck, which has a ton of the new mechanics from the set, including Venture into the Dungeon, which is uh, presented on a Triumphant Adventure here, a 2-mana 1-1 one, one Human Knight with Death Touch, that as long as it's our turn also has First Strike, which is a nice combo with Death Touch, and whenever the Adventure attacks we get to Venture into the Dungeon. Now there's three different dungeon cards that we can choose from outside the game, and whenever we venture into the dungeon we can select one of the three dungeons of our choice, and we start at the very top of the card, in this case Dungeon of the Mad Mage. In the very first room we get the Yawning Portal which lets us gain one life, then with the next instance of Venture into the Dungeon we move down into the dungeon to the dungeon level which lets us cry one, and then with the next one we have a choice between the Goblin Bazaar and the Twisted Caverns, and so we move our way down to the Mad Wizard's Lair at the very bottom, which is quite a reward as we get to draw three cards and reveal them, and then cast one of them without paying its mana cost. So Dungeon of the Mad Mage is the longest dungeon, which has eight different stages, but there's a few shorter ones as well that maybe don't have quite as much of a reward at the very end. And then there's a few cards in the deck that also care about completing dungeons. So we've got the Cloister Gargoyle, for instance, which is an 0-4 for 3 mana. When it enters battlefield, we can venture into the dungeon. And as long as we've completed a dungeon, the Gargoyle gets plus 3 plus 0 and has flying. So we've got a few different cards that care about completing dungeons, which is a reason to sometimes select one of the shorter dungeons so we can complete them a little bit faster. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana, we've got 3 copies of Fly, an Enchantment Aura, giving the Enchanted Creature flying and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player we can venture into the dungeon so it gives us a bit of evasion. At 2 mana we've got the Malison, a 2 mana 2-1 two snake rogue and it cannot be blocked as long as it's attacking alone and whenever it deals combat damage to a player we can venture into the dungeon. Then we also have our Triumphant Adventure, as well as some cheap removal with three copies of Heartless Sanct and three copies of Vanishing Verse. If you want to make this rotation proof you can replace the Heartless Sanct with another removal spell. Then we've got our Cloister Gargoyle, and the full playset of Nadar, Selfless Paladin, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Legendary Dragon Knight with Vigilance, and when Nadar enters the battlefield or attacks, we can venture into the dungeon, and other creatures we control get plus one plus one as long as we've completed a dungeon. Then we've got a single copy of Acerarok, the Archlich, a 3-mana five 5-5 five five Legendary Zombie Wizard at Mythic, and when the Archlich enters the battlefield, if we haven't completed Tomb of Annihilation, we have to return the Archlich to its owner's hand and venture into the dungeon, and Tomb of Annihilation is the name of one of the other dungeons, which is the shortest dungeon potentially. We can potentially complete it in just three attempts, although that does mean we have to go through the Oubliette, which makes us discard a card, sacrifice a creature, an artifact, and a land, so instead we might want to go through the Veils of Fear and the Sandfall Cell instead. And then whenever the Archlich attacks, for each opponent we make a 2-2 black zombie creature token unless that player sacrifices a creature, so that's quite a reward as well. And for completing Tomb of Annihilation we also create a token named the Atropal, which is a legendary 4-4 black god horror creature token with death touch, and going through Tomb of Annihilation can also help us lower the opponent's life total, so that's the most aggressive dungeon to go through. Then we also have a single copy of Precipitous Drop, 3 mana enchantment aura, enchants a creature giving it minus 2 minus 2 or minus 5 minus 5 as long as we've completed a dungeon, and when it enters the battlefield we can also venture into the dungeon. Then we've got three copies of Hama Pashar, Rune Seeker, a 2-3 legendary human wizard, saying room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time, so that's also quite synergistic in this deck. And then at 4 mana we have Barrowin of Clan Undur, a 4 mana 3-3 three, three legendary dwarf cleric. When it enters the battlefield we venture, and whenever Barrowin attacks, return up to one creature card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield if we've completed a dungeon, and there's no shortage of valuable creatures to get back. 
And then at the top end of our deck, we've got two copies of the new Planeswalker, Loth Spider Queen. Starts out at 4 loyalty and has a passive saying whenever a creature we control dies, put a loyalty counter on it. The zero ability lets us draw a card and lose one life. The minus 3 generates 2-2-1 two, two, black spider creature tokens with menace and reach. And the emblem can also help us deal more damage. And then going over the mana base, 25 lands, including a few basics, two planes, one island, two swamps, with a new D&D flavor text, four copies of Fabled Passage to search them up, then all 12 pathways in our colors, as well as a few temples, Temple of Enlightenment, two copies of Temple of Silence, and one Temple of Deceit. These will rotate out with the next rotation, same with Fabled Passage, so the mana base will have to change a little bit in the upcoming fall. But for now, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can play turn to adventure if we play our Murkwater pathway on turn two. And since we have the Archlich in our hand, we probably want to complete the Tomb of Annihilation. Do we want to keep Hama on top? I think we need to find more ways to venture. And ideally an untapped third land. Up against turn one, a cleric class, so life gain deck. Alright, so we won't be able to play out any of our creatures here. And I'm gonna go with Tomb of Annihilation. And then we can fetch up an island. Hope to kill a creature here. A righteous Valkyrie we can take out. Get an island. Alrighty. So... Could put Fly on the Adventure, although then we won't be able to play the Snake Rogue. So, instead probably go with Berwin, and then discard a creature that we can then maybe get back next turn with Berwin. So, not gonna go through the Oubliettes. So yeah, we'll discard our Snake Rogue, which we can next turn get back when Barrowin attacks. And now we'll decline and lose two life. So next turn the Arch Lich will come into play. I guess we'll have to give Barrowin flight first. So if I play the Archlich now, it's gonna return. So I think we wanna attack first. And we'll pass. And next turn, Barrowin can get our creature back from the graveyard. Attack with the team. And then we can venture into our next dungeon, which is probably going to be the Lost Mine. Opponent is at 5. Falls to 2. For Daxos and Linden. And yeah, opponent's gonna be dead on board next turn. Sweet, on to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Snake Rogue. And then I guess we can decide to play the white source here. In case we need to change plan and cast a Vanishing Verse early. Turn three, Nadar. Up against Mono Blue, perhaps. They've got their own Malison. Well, we could go for Hama Pashar. Although I think going for Nadar first is probably better. And then which dungeon do we want to go for here? I'm thinking the Lost Mine to complete it a bit sooner as opposed to the Mad Mage. And then I don't mind getting a treasure so I can double spell next turn. Even though a goblin would also be nice if we eventually complete a dungeon, so we have an extra creature that gets plus one plus one. Malison's gonna fly. So Vanishing Verse is gonna be pretty key here. So we take two, put on against two venture twice. And we'll see which dungeon they choose. Goes for the lost mine as well. Makes a treasure. Alright, probably lead with Hama and then see if there's a response. Gets countered. Fair enough. Now we can Vanishing Verse the opponent's creature. And we get to Venture. And Dungeon Complete. Gargle's another nice one. Opponent passes. They could turn on Faceless Haven. But uh, yeah, I guess that's fine. We'll just attack with the team. Gonna be a dragon turtle. Tapping down one of our two creatures. Nadar attacks, and now I'm kind of liking the Tomb of Annihilation to get the opponent's life total low. And I'm fine discarding a card as well. Frost Augur explains all the snow lands, so they can still animate Haven, and Spider Queen's perfect here. And our opponent explodes. 
Alright, sadly I wasn't able to get more footage for this deck, but I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.